the last two nights, AJ Cannell. Really glad to have you with us on this rainy Sunday in Seattle. Take a look at what took place in game two of this series. It started off with a Stanford solo home run from Jimmy Nadai in the first inning. The first will get a couple of strikeouts from Calvin Kirchhoff. He had a great outing to start, but then stumbled towards the middle. Christian Lim came out strong as well for Stanford. There's the home run from Jimmy Nadai over the left field fence in the first inning. Stanford held a 1-0 lead at that point, and they were up 2-1 to one when Iva Arquette sent this over the fence in the fifth inning for Washington. Stanford, after a great relief outing by Sam Boyle, he ran into some bad luck, including that infield single RBI court McDonald wound up being 4-2 to two going into the ninth. Cam Clayton had a chance to drive in the tying run with the runner on second base and runner on third with a couple of outs uh, in the ninth, but Clayton struck out as Torn O'Haran got his second straight save, and that brings us to today where it's game three of this series. Stanford won game one by a score of three to two, took game two four to two, but with the tying run in scoring position and the top of the Washington order up. So a couple of close games back to back, and here we are for game three of this series. It'll be Spencer Desart on the mound for Washington facing Court McDonald to lead off this game. Rest of the Stanford lineup, Malcolm Moore will bat second playing catcher Jimmy Nadai, the first baseman batting third. Then it's Brady Reynolds in right field hitting cleanup. Jake Sapien at DH batting fifth. Trevor Haskins, the shortstop. Timo Becerra at third. Ethan Hot in center. And Owen Cobb is the number nine hitter playing second. Court McDonald shoots this one to left. A.J. Guerrero toward the line. Hat falls off, holds on to the baseball. So now Malcolm Moore, who also homered yesterday for Stanford off of the starter, Kirchhoff, in the fifth. Desart, the 6'2", sophomore from Florida. Played his freshman year at Middlebury College, Division Three school in Vermont. So first year with the program for Desart. Remember the success that Washington had last year with Division Three transfer Kiefer Lord, who went in the third round of the Baltimore Orioles in last year's draft. Driven by Malcolm Moore, right field, and this leaves no doubt. Malcolm Moore goes yard for the second straight day. Stanford has grabbed a lead first in all three games. Washington is yet to hold a lead in this series. Came back to tie the game for the better part of the night at two until Stanford broke it open last night. In the top of the ninth, Jimmy Nadai Goes the other way, all the way to the wall. Nadai will decide to stay at second with a stand-up double.
He came into the game hitting 396. That one might inch him just over 400 with that base hit. So Moore and Natai go back-to-back -back extra base hits. And now it's Brady Reynolds. Desart came into this matchup with great numbers. Didn't have a decision in his first three starts, but 337 ERA, 18 and two thirds innings, 10 hits, seven runs all earned, 10 walks, 12 strikeouts, and one home run coming into the day. Just given up his second of the season. Batter's only hitting 159 this year against Desart, but not a great strikeout to walk ratio in the non-conference. For Stanford, it's gonna be Nick Dugan on the mound today. For Washington defensively, A.J. Guerrero in left field. Cooper Witten is the center fielder. Carson Oland in right. Blake Wilson replaces Sam DiCarlo at third base today. Cam Clayton is the shortstop. Iva Arquette at second. Jeter Ibarra, the first baseman. Behind the plate, Colin Blanchard for Desart, who now has worked his way towards a three and one count. And that's high ball four. Washington's bullpen should be in pretty good shape. Huskies only used two pitchers in game one, Jared Engman and Grant Cunningham, and then yesterday got an extended outing in relief out of Sam Boyle, despite him taking the loss. And John Lucas Shin came in briefly at the end. So really, most of the bullpen should be available today if they have to think about, it's still very early on, uh, turning this into more of a bullpen game, but we've seen Desart run into some trouble. Three straight reaching base. And now two on with one out and already down one nothing. Pitch is swung on and missed there by Jake Sapien, the DH, getting his first start of the series. His ninth start of the season, hitting 250 this year. Desart features a fastball that tops out at about 91. He also has a slider and a changeup. Slider that misses low there. So the count has run full on Sapien receiving his first at bat of the series. And ball four. Two straight walks permitted by Desart. And the bases are loaded. Stanford coming out here gunning for the sweep today. 
And right now, they're on their way. Still the top half of the first inning, but they're looking for a huge inning against Desart. It's possible now with the bases full. Trevor Haskins, the shortstop at the plate, though he is called for a swinging strike there. Haskins at just 170 this year, grounds it foul. Haskins appeared in 22 total games over the last two years. Now in his junior year. And getting the regular starting nod at shortstop. Big out from Desart. First strike out of the game. And that leaves the inning up to Timo Becerra. Three on, two out here in the top of the first. Cardinal lone run came off the bat of Malcolm Moore. Now it's Jimmy Nadai over at third base, Reynolds at second, Sapien at first. Husky infield in a shift. The first pitch, swing and hit up the middle. It'll be gloved by our cut at second base. Soft throw to first, will be in time to retire the side. A Malcolm Moore home run is the lone run scored for the Cardinal. As they load the bases but are unable to capitalize further, we'll go to the home first. Cardinal lead the Huskies by a score of 1-0 here in KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Cardinal taking the field for the home first here from Husky Ballpark at Chaffee Field. The Huskies looking to avoid the sweep against Stanford. Stanford took the first two games by a combined three runs. Three to two the score line in the game one Friday, four to two the score line last night. The lineup for the Huskies slightly changed. Slightly changed in the first two games. It'll be Cam, Cam Clayton, the shortstop leading off. He'll be followed by Ivar Kett at second. Jerry Barr, the lefty first baseman batting third. Clean up is AJ Guerrero, the left fielder, and then the designated hitter, Michael Brown, hitting fifth. Carson Olin back in the lineup today after getting last night off. Switch hitter batting sixth and playing right, seventh hitter. Playing center field, Cooper Witten. Uh, third base, Blake Wilson. And rounding out the order is Colin Blanchard, the lefty catcher, getting the nod today after coming in late tomorrow, late yesterday, I should say. Sam DiCarlo, the casualty of the, the changes for Jason Kelly's team. This top part of the lineup has been the dangerous part, and Nick Dugan will look to navigate that danger here. Cam Clayton, the first batter he'll see. Overshift on for the Cardinal. Dugan steps and delivers. Ball lifted high, but foul out of play. Dugan, the right-handed starting pitcher from Eureka, California, comes in with a 4.50 ERA. His 0-1 to Clayton is low. The three weekend starters for the Cardinal combined for five years experiment, experience, I should say. The sophomore Dugan steps and delivers a ball that is fouled straight back off the bat of Clayton. Scott, a sophomore, Lim, a freshman, went yesterday, and now another sophomore, Dugan, on the mound today. A young pitching staff, but a pitching staff that has found out how to navigate hitters recently through their recent wins. And the pitch from Dugan is low. Breaking ball. Try to get Clayton to chase. It's not something Clayton does too often. Clayton last year's all Pac-12 shortstop. Holds the bat above his right shoulder. Now gets into his stance in the pitch. Front door breaking ball called strike three looking. Perfect pitch from Nick Dugan right on the black right where Malcolm Moore wanted it. And that will be the first out of the day. Just froze him with a nasty curveball. Dugan throws a, that was a little harder of a curveball than he typically throws. More of a slurve. Came at 77 miles an hour with good horizontal break. That'll bring up the second baseman who's been a very tough out, Ivar Kett. Two homers to his name this series. The first pitch to him. 
Fastball at the knee, strike one. Arquette, whose first career out came to the hands of Quinn Matthews. This gets set for the 0-1, and it'll be missed low and outside. Second baseman holds the bat over his right shoulder as the 1-1. One, one. Outside corner, strike two. Arquette not so happy with that call from Sean Rakos. Dugan with holding his glove right on the lettering of his jersey. Steps and delivers. Swing and a miss. Arquette chased a slider there. Second out of the inning, both via the K. Great start from the sophomore right-hander Nick Dugan. After getting maybe a generous call on the outside part of the plate with a fastball, went to the exact same location with the slider. We've got Arquette to swing over the top, now bringing up Jeter Ibarra. Cardinal moving to a deep shift. Timo Becerra, the third baseman, playing whichever Haskin the shortstop typically would. The first pitch, Ibarra is fouled out of play. Defense behind Nick Dugan. The dependable backstop, Malcolm Moore catching. Infield left to right, Becerra third, Haskins at short, Cobb at second. Natai at first, the outfield from left to right, McDonald in left, hot in center, Brady Reynolds in right. The 0-1, missed outside with a changeup. A lot of movement on that pitch as there always is. A changeup from Dugan is his best weapon when he locates it effectively. It also gets him into trouble on occasion. The 1-1, swing and a miss, got Ibarra to throw his bat. Looked fooled on a changeup there. Looked like a hittable fastball the whole way, then dropped off the table and tailed away. Ibarra's flat. Ibarra's bat came flying out of his hand. In these wet conditions, so the rain has, I believe it's subsided. I'm nice and protected and warm here in my in my booth. The nice facilities at Chaffee Field at Husky Ballpark. The one-two pitch from Dugan. We chopped into play over the shortstop Haskins. Haskins gloves it cleanly on the second base side of the bag and throw over to Nadai as well in time to retire the side. One, two, three, go the Huskies. As the Cardinal will look to add more runs after their Malcolm Moore solo shot, open up the scoring as the Stanford leads Washington by a score of 1-0 here in KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Eight nine one do it for the Cardinals. The first pitch even hot, swing and a miss. So under a slider there. It's one zero here at the top of the second inning from rainy Seattle, Washington. The O one pitch even hot will miss way outside with the fastball. Yanked one there. It's Spencer Desart on the mound for the Huskies. Desart, the six two right hander, comes at the belt. Steps and delivers a ball that's fouled off to the right side. A lot of velo off the bat of Ethan Hot, but couldn't time it up. Hot holding the bat on his right shoulder. Start steps and, steps and delivers, swing and a miss. Strike three. Hot chased upstairs on a slider. That was two high sliders that Hot swung under. Maybe mistake pitches from Desart, but Hot couldn't capitalize. Now the batter's the tall second baseman, Owen Cobb. First pitch to Cobb. Swing and chopped over to the left side. The third baseman, Wilson, gloves it cleanly. Throw to first in time. After two errors of the third baseman last night, the new one, Blake Wilson, today makes a convincing and smooth play over there. Been some changes over at third base this year for the Huskies. They started Ivar Arquette over there, then DiCarlo got a lot of game action. Now Wilson there today. Court McDonald showing bunt, pulls back, strike one called. A little surprised to see him show bunt. Wilson is playing, anticipating the possibility of the drag bunt. He's a lone player on the left side of the infield. 0-1, McDonald not showing bunt. He'll take a ball, change up low. The 
McDonald flew out flew out to the left fielder Guerrero in his first time up this pitch. Misses well outside on a changeup. Actually looked like a fastball there based off the speed. Start's been sitting right out at 89 miles an hour with his fastball. As the 2-1 outside again. A little closer there. But no dice, says Sean Rakos, the home plate umpire. Donald looking to draw walk number eight on the year. The 3 1 pitch. He swings it, hits it high out to the left center. Left center, center fielder ranging back. And there'll be the left fielder, Guerrero. They'll nab the ball. 1 2 3, go the Cardinal. As we'll now go to the home second. Stanford leads the Huskies by a score of 1 0 on KZSU 2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Nick Dugan back on the mound for second inning of work after two strikeouts and a soft grounder to Trevor Haskins. He'll look to continue his success. He'll be facing the 4-5-6 up for the Huskies. It'll be A.J. Guerrero up first, a right-handed cleanup hitter, followed by the lefty Michael Brown and the switch hitter Carson Owen. A.J. Guerrero Jr. has started his whole time at Washington. Started both the freshman sophomore year, now as a junior as well. All Pac-12 honorable mention last year. He's also an excellent hitter as a freshman. Led the entire team in OPS back in 2022. Look to continue his 2024 success here. First pitcher Nick Dugan swung and hit foul out of play to the right side behind a fastball. Guerrero hitting just 200 on the year. Right at the Mendoza line. He does have quite a few walks to his name. Nine walks and 54 at bat. Or play appearances, I should say. A one outside fastball that misses. Infield defense for the Cardinals. Straight up. Outfield slight shift to the right. Career waving the bat well above his shoulder as he sees it swings and misses on a slider. Cold day in Seattle, Washington. Everyone not in the field to play is wearing a jacket over their uniform. In the 1 2 pitch, swung and hit foul out of play. Beautiful ballpark, Chaffee Field at Husky Ballpark. You can see Lake Washington, a big blue lake out in the distance. Actually, right behind the ballpark, I should say, right behind the batter's eye. As the 1 2 pitch from Dugan. Upstairs. Bridge ac across the, the lake, right behind the ballpark as well. Going into the Bellevue skyline in the distance. 2-2 two, two pitch. Swung a hit to the left side. Becerra gloves it cleanly. Running hard up the line is Guerrero. The throw in the dirt. And Abba tag gets him. And it's in time just barely. A bang-bang play at first. But they call him out. A one-hop throw. She bounced considerably distance from the ground to Nadai's glove. But Nadai on the stretch grabs it in time for the first out of the inning. There's a Cardinal lead by a score of 1-0 here in the home second. It will be Michael Brown, the left-handed designated hitter, now at the plate. The pitch to him will be chopped high in the air. It will be Haskins ranging over. Running throw to Nadai in time. Rangy play for the shortstop. Started the left side of the second base bag. Ran all the way over. And made a smooth throw for the second ground out. Five up, five down for Washington. And Dugan. And Dugan will like for six up, six down against number six, Carson Olin. Switch hitter taking his cuts left handed here. And the first pitch at the knees, strike one. Fastball at 91 miles an hour. Dugan generally sits lower 90s, upper 80s in the later part of his outings with that fastball. Now the 0 1. Just change up in the zone, strike two. Dugan been very efficient thus far. That was pitch number 22. One strike away from 
after completing his second clean inning. He steps and delivers. Hit out to shortstop. Diving play, but Haskins can't make it. The ball gets to left field. Court McDonald fields it cleanly. Throws it into second base. Overshoots Owen Cobb. The ball goes all the way to Jimmy Natai. But it won't matter. Is there'll be a single. And Carson Olin will stay at first base through all the fielding interesting happenings. First base runner of the day for the Huskies. I'll bring up the right fielder, Cooper Witten. Witten had his first start of the season last year and is getting his second today. Dugan from the stretch, delivers fastball outer part of the plate, strike one. Some jeers from the small crowd in attendance. Those here are pretty back in the bleachers, try to get out of the rain and be shielded as much from the wind as possible. See some dogs in the Bark in the Park promo day as the 0-1 pitch from Dugan outside. One on, two out here in the bottom of the second. Stanford leads Washington by a score of 1-0. Cooper Witt in the batter, taking his practice cuts. Dugan comes set, steps, delivers, high slider. Witten steps out of the box before the 2-1 pitch. Dugan Rummy got the ball. The shirt's getting very, very wet, very fast here for a pitcher. May have struggle. He gets swing and a miss. On a fastball, high cheese there, sitting at 90 miles an hour. Went and tried to do damage with that cut, got none of it. Wind blowing straight in from center right now. A lot less wind than there was yesterday, however, but the rainy conditions could make a ballpark play small. The pitch upstairs with the fastball. Count runs full. Carson Nolan at first base will get a head start with a full count and two outs. Dugan working from the stretch. Steps and delivers. Swing and a miss. Third strike out of the day. This one on a fastball. I believe Witten just chased ball four as Dugan gets out of the inning unscathed. Will now go to the third inning. Stanford leads this by a score of 1-0 here on KZSU 2. Stanford Student Radio Network. Malcolm Moore leading off the third inning after a solo shot is the lone score of the ball game thus far. Stanford leads the Huskies by a score of 3-0 on this getaway day. Cardinal took the first two games looking for their second straight sweep and in this road trip, happy. Moore digs into the left-handed batter's box with his open stance. The start steps and delivers backdoor slider that missed somewhere. Looks pretty good to me. But not to Sean Rakos behind the dish. Malcolm Moore not complaining with that call. Now the 1-0. Swing and a miss over the top of a slider. Heavy shift on the infield for the Huskies. Didn't matter last time. If you hit the ball out of play over that right field wall, doesn't matter how the defense is set up. Now the 1-1 pitch upstairs and outside with a changeup. Big sigh for Malcolm Moore. We're in the red tops. With the gray bottoms to start in the mound. Steps and delivers a 2-1. Fouled off the foot of Malcolm Moore. As he stumbles out of the batter's box and takes a minute. That one looked painful. I think it got him right on the ankle. As he's still grimacing. Hasn't stepped back in. He's walking very gingerly. Hasn't called for any trainer himself. But the trainer's now making his way out. Joined by David Esker. I hope Malcolm Moore's okay. He's starting to get some momentum on the year. Timing just hasn't been there with a swing early in the year. And he, two homers in two games, has started to turn around a great defensive player. This would be a, a huge loss if this is a, a an injury off a sharp foul ball hit right off the bat, straight down off his foot. Looked like it got him on his ankle. Hope it hit the pad, but based off his reaction, I'm not sure it did. As he gives the thumbs up, and he is all right to continue. Still grimacing a little bit and trying to walk it off. Shaking the leg quite a bit. Now shaking the bat. 
Adjusts his helmet. Now he steps back in the box for this 2-2 pitch from Spencer to start. To start. Comes set. High leg kick. Steps and delivers. Ball is grounded sharply to first base. First base and gloves it cleanly. Ibarra flips to the start. Oh, 3-1 ground out. The first out of the third inning. Malcolm Moore a little ahead of an off-speed offering there. And rolled it over. Straight at the first baseman Ibarra. Yeah, with one out, no one on. It'll be the first baseman, Jimmy Nadai, now up. Nadai doubled. It was left stranded at third base in the first inning. The first pitch from Desart in the zone. Get me over slider. Strike one. Desart. High leg kicks, throws the pitch. He'll be a swing and a miss. Similar located slider. Jimmy Nadai ahead of it. Strike two. And the 0-2 pitch in the dirt. Yanked what looked like a change up there. It's hard to tell. Pitch traveled about 55 feet. Couldn't tell the break on it. Heavy shift on in the infield as the one-two pitch will be in the dirt again. Jerry Barr, the first baseman, the lone man on the right side, splitting the first and second base bag, playing pretty shallow. Outfield in the straight up alignment for the first baseman, Nadai, in the pitch. Missed well outside, ball three. From 0-2 to 3-2. to two. Nadai's had three pretty, seen pretty un- um, Unproductive pitches, bad misses on the mound from Desart. Uncompetitive, I should say. Is the full count pitch is low. That was a good take from Nadai. That one didn't miss by too much on the fastball. Probably three inches below the bottom part of the strike zone. And Nadai takes it. Walk number six on the year after having double number nine. First baseman shown great gap power and got his first career home run last night. He's having himself a great season. I was shocked that was his first home run based off his stat line. It's now Brady Reynolds. Swings and misses over the top of the first pitch. It squirts away from Blanchard and that eye will easily make his way to second base. So the strike on the play will go down as a wild pitch as well as that eye advances into scoring position with two out here in the top of the third. Stanford leads Washington by a score of 1-0. Reynolds batting 323 on the year, looking to increase the lead. The pitch inside takes it. Reynolds, the freshman, has won the job over in right field thus far in the year. Had been very productive at the plate. Long pause before the 1-1. Chops over at first base, but it'll go foul. One on at second base is Jimmy Nadai. One out here in the top of the third inning. Sunday getaway game. Sanford looking for the sweep. Washington looking for their first Pac-12 win of the campaign. Start delivers the one two outside. Try to go back to with the slider. Couldn't get the bite. If Reynolds is unable to reach, he'll be Jake Sapien due up next for a chance to drive home a run and double the lead. Dancing at first, second base is Jimmy Nadai, and the throw will be there. Nadai diving back safely. Very cloudy day here in Seattle. Temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. And some rain on the forecast. It's a 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss in the dirt. Blanchard applies the tag. As a strikeout is the second out of the inning for the Huskies. We'll say that the strikeout has been a problem for Brady Reynolds. That's strikeout number 11 through 32 at-bats. Coming in about 30% of play appearances. 
The, the ball's been put in play. He's done so effectively. Jake Sapien, the designated hitter, now in the right hander's batter's box. The first pitch he sees is yanked well outside and low. Ball one. Lights are on in this early afternoon game. Give you a sense of the cloud coverage. Now dancing at second base, the pitch will be delivered to Sapien in the zone. Right down, palm drive with the fastball. Sapien getting the first at bat of his series. And the pitch be yanked. Ball two. Must be tough for these pitchers to grip the ball in these rainy conditions. It's being a getaway game. The game could not be postponed. I'm sure everyone would have liked to push it to four had the flights worked for Stanford. As the 2 1 pitch will be yanked again. It's supposed to be a cloudy but not rainy afternoon here. Had rain all through the morning. Nothing too heavy. These both teams took batting practice through the conditions. Is the 3 1 pitch from the stretch will be an outside fastball with ball four. Sapien did not look too happy. As that's his second walk of the day. He's really not seen anything worth hitting. And this being his still yet to record an at bat in the series. I'm sure he. He's actually looking to drive home a run and never had an opportunity to. The one hittable pitch, I don't think he was sitting fastball and never was going to swing at it. So I'll bring up the shortstop Trevor Haskins with two on and two out here. The throw will go to second base. No one's covering, uh, but the pitcher to start finds where the second baseman Ivar Kett was and just tosses it to him. He was playing about four or five yards actually probably more probably five or six yards from the bag as the pitch showing bun is haskins he pulls back a little strange to see a drag bun attempt with two out and no one in scoring position it would the best case scenario of a bun is you're just going to load the bases the ball nonetheless haskins with the bat on his shoulder stating upright does not show bunt takes the ball low and outside To start, comes set at the belt. Working from the stretch, steps and delivers, swung right back towards me. Out of play foul. Haskins looked silly on a strikeout pitch his last time up in the first inning. He's in a big spot. Now looking to drive home a run again here. Runner in scoring position, two out. Two one pitch. Long pause on the mound from the start. As he now he delivers, he'll be swung and hit foul. Well out of play, a little late on the fastball. Last one got up to 90 miles an hour. Haskins not close to keeping that one in the field of play. 2-2 two, two the count, two out here, two on. And the pitch is hit high in the air out to center field. The center fielder doesn't have to move. Now coming in is Witten and he will make the play easily. Two reach, but no one comes across the score for the Cardinals. We'll now go to the home, thor home third. Stanford leads Washington by a score of 1-0 here on KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Eight nine one due up for the Huskies. They look to score their first run of the third game of the series. Friday game, the Cardinal won by a score of 3-2. Yesterday by a score of 4-2. Looking for a win number 9 on the year, coming in at 8-6. The first pitch from Nick Dugan, swing and a miss by Blake Wilson. Wilson, the freshman, played center field the first two games of the series. Now getting the start today at third. Coming in batting just 178. As the 0-1 pitch will be hit hard up the middle, but Trevor Haskins diving cannot make the play. The ball gets to the left center, ranging over Ethan Hot. The ball is still rolling all the way to the warning track. Wilson getting the second base standing. A leadoff double for the Huskies. With a runner on second base and no one out here in the bottom third. Over the 
Uh, the catcher, Colin Blanchard, up now. Blanchard getting the start today after being off yesterday. The Huskies have a pretty true split between their two catchers, Bauer and Blanchard. And tend to use both of them in the same game. A platoon split, more or less. The lefty Blanchard does get the preference. Being lefty, he's showing bunt and lays one down, but a trickle foul. This is Blanchard's seventh start of the year. Bauer has five to his name. Somehow just speed at bat number 15 for the catcher. He's showing bunt again, pulls it back. Strike two called. Backdoor breaking ball, looping one there from Nick Dugan. Blanchard decided not to offer at it. Now with two strikes, would be surprised to see him try to bunt again. Ball to the right side of the infield would likely do the same as in bunt. See if that's what he tries to do. Not showing bunt in the pitch outside. Misses low. Breaking ball there. Try to get him to swing over the top when it was unable to do so. Blanchard. Holding the bat right on his left shoulder. And the pitch. Inside, did it hit him? Yes, it did. Blanchard started to go on a fastball. And more or less moved his elbow, elbow through the, the check swing right into the path of the ball. Obviously not intentional, but an outcome I'm sure he'll take in a two-strike count. This he'll reach via the hit-by-pitch. Hit-by-pitch has been a big problem for the Cardinal this year. That's hit batter number 24. It's been a physical year for the Cardinal. We've also been hit 20 times. I mean, for that's a pretty, a very high number, if I may say. For reference, the the Huskies have hit 11 and have hit, been hit 10 times, so more or less doubled the numbers of Washington in the same sample size. Lime car flips over. Cam Clayton, the batter, first pitch upstairs fastball misses. Two on, no one out here. Is the Cardinal lead by one? In the third inning of the Sunday getaway game. Nick Dugan, the sophomore on the mound. His steps and delivers. High fastball. Check swing. Did not go to the shortstop. Some light rain still coming down here in Seattle. Tough conditions for the pitchers. They've both pitched well thus far. Only one round allowed. Next pitch is well up and in on a Look like a change up there. Dugan not too happy with himself. 3 0 count now to the dangerous shortstop. Three fairly uncompetitive pitches. And the pitch in the zone. Right down, palm drive. Strike one. Middle, middle fastball. Just trying to get a strike there. Waiting, taking all the way. Dugan sizing the mound, now steps and delivers well inside. Ball four, that'll walk the bases loaded as Thomas Eager takes a slow walk out to the mound to visit his starting pitcher. No one out in the bullpen yet for the Cardinal. Now the bases are loaded with no one out, no one out here with the bases loaded in the third inning. And it's the, the dangerous man, Ivar Kett. Dugan struck him out the first time up. But he does have two homers to his name this series. Three on the year. Arquette now batting 286 with a 551 slugging. So a lot of pop out, off the bat of the second baseman. As Sean Rakos, the home plate umpire, breaks up the mound visit. Thomas Eager heads back to the dugout and Nick Dugan back to the mound. Ivar Kett takes a big practice swing. Now steps in the right-hander batter's box. Bases are juiced. And no one out here in the home third. Stanford leads the Huskies by a score of 
Defense in double play depth. And the pitch. Swung and hit foul out of play. Court McDonald playing very deep in left. Ethan Hot shallow in center. Slightly t- shifted to his right. Brady Reynolds shallow and playing to his right and right field. So McDonald has a lot of space to himself. The next pitch will be grounded over to third base. But Sierra does not glove gla- it cleanly. The tag is applied from the runner going from second to third. And that will be the only out he gets as Blake Wilson scores on the play. So an RBI fielder choice for the second baseman, Ivar Raquette, and that will tie the scores at one apiece. It's an awkward play for Timo Becerra. It was a chopper. It took a high last bounce right into his bread basket. Knocked it down right in front of himself, and the runner from second base, Blanchard, was coming right towards him. So he made the smart, wise decision to just turn around and apply the tag there rather than trying to do too much with a throw. Now the first pitch misses outside to Dieter Ibarra. Still two on, one out here in the home third. Huskies looking for their first lead of the series. Taken from the stretch, delivers outside, changeup, misses. Taken really rubbing off the baseball, trying to get grip in this wet day. Flag still flowing in. And the pitch swung and hit hard over the head of Timo Becerra. That'll get down to the left field line. Could go all the way to the wall. Court McDonald chases it, runs back to the wall. One run comes across the score. The other run coming around third base, and he'll score without a play. Two run double for Junior Ibarra. The Huskies take their first lead in the series. Now three to one here in the third inning. So still one out in a runner in scoring position. Jerry Barr at second base. The batter is A.J. Guerrero. The right-handed left fielder. Gets set for his second at bat of the day. Looking for his first hit. Long pause. Now Dugan steps and delivers high slider. They'll miss. Guerrero batting below the Mendoza line. Came in batting 200. And 0 for 1 with a ground out to Timo Becerra his first time up. Stanford infield defense playing straight up. Outfield slightly shifted. The pitch will be hit to the right side. Moving back is Brady Reynolds. Still going back and he'll look up. The ball is off the wall. One hop the wall coming around third base to score without a throw is Jeter Ibarra and two consecutive doubles and the score is now four to one in favor of Washington. Hard hit ball. Sent Brady Reynolds to the wall, turned around and watched it one hop. Right where the Malcolm Moore home run left the building. It's still only one out here in the third inning. It'll be the designated hitter, Michael Brown. Now some action in the Cardinal bullpen. Looks like a right hander getting warm out there. Can't tell who it is. I would guess Ben Reimers. But his number is... It is Ben Reimers, I believe. A three-run inning for Washington. And still counting. Still just one out. Guerrero up there with Ibarra in scoring position. Guerrero puts a charge into it, sending Reynolds moving back toward the wall. Takes a hop, it's over Reynolds' head and against the wall. So Ibarra comes in. Back-to-back doubles. Guerrero makes it for one.
Blake Wilson also began this inning with a double. So it's the third hit of the inning. All doubles for Washington. It's the most runs scored in a game in this series for the Huskies. They scored two each of the first two games. They've equaled what they produced in the first two games with four runs here in the first two and a third. Cardinal 2-0 in their Pac-12 campaign. As Dugan steps and delivers ball. Hard hit ball up the middle. They'll get through the 4-6 hole. Coming around third base to score is A.J. Guerrero. And he'll do so without a throw. 5-1, the Husky lead. Dugan went to the curveball that time. Might actually been a slow slider. And Brown was not fooled. Stuck with it the whole way. And hit it on the screws right up the middle. That'll bring up the switch hitter, Carson Olin. Dugan comes at the belt from the stretch. Delivers, get me over, slider. Actually, curveball there. Strike one. All five runs the Huskies scored have been earned this inning by Dugan. The pitch in the dirt with a changeup. A crooked number gets the Huskies their first lead of their Pac-12 campaign. Dugan looks at the runner, Michael Brown at first, turns his attention home, and delivers to get me over breaking ball again, strike two. Reimer's the lone man out there in the bullpen. I should believe that's Reimer's. Be a more definitive word in a minute as Dugan steps off the mound before the 1 2. Stepping back on with the pitch clock now reset. Good set for the 1 2 pitch. Outside changeup, they'll miss. The only out of the inning produced an RBI. It was a fielder's choice ground out by Arquette that tied the game. And the next three batters have had base hits, and all of a sudden it's 5-1. Three doubles in the inning. One batter's been hit. One has walked. And that is ball four. So it's the third free pass of the inning, including the hit batter. And now still with just one out. The runner moves up into scoring position, two on. And you wonder if that might be it for Dugan. Cooper Witten will be the ninth batter of the inning for Washington. And that will be the day for Nick Dugan. He is responsible for... Runners on first and second here with one out in the third. Already five have come in. Dugan has been very solid in all of his starts this year, but has struggled today. And Thomas Eager has come out to the mound to make the change here. So we'll step aside here during the pitching change. They're having a conversation, but there's a new pitcher coming in for Stanford. And it's Joey Volchko. So we'll introduce him coming up next. But Washington has already put five on the board here in the inning, looking for more.
Pitts. Look to keep the score where it is. Five to one, the Huskies lead the Cardinal. First pitch. First pitch from Volchko gets by Malcolm Moore. Bounce the fastball. Volchko has good stuff. But with the wet conditions here in Seattle today, it may be hard for him to grip the baseball. Certainly was so that pitch. As Malcolm Moore never really had a chance at keeping Michael Brown from advancing from thir- to third base. Or uh, Chase Olin from advancing to Coop Carson Olin from advancing to second. My apologies. So two in scoring position. Now the 1-0 is missed badly again. A fastball yanked. Volchko comes in with a 270 yard array in the pitch. Yanked it again, a fastball. And sitting 94 at that pitch. But he hasn't located anywhere near the strike zone through three pitches. Now the 3 0 offering. Volchko comes set at the belt. High leg kick and delivers in the zone, strike one. Up to 95 on the gun there. Cardinal infield playing uh, Cooper Witten straight up. Round right matchup in the pitch. Oh, way out aside as Michael Brown comes across the score on the wild pitch walk. So a walk issue to Witten and on the play, Olin will advance to third and Michael Brown comes home to score. So the score is now 6-1. Washington leads Stanford. That was a slider that went behind the right-hander, Witten. Just straight to the backstop. I mean, two wild pitches that Malcolm Moore had not a chance at keeping in front. It's good of a uh, defensive backstop he is, he would have had to use the force to keep those in front of him. So still one out in the inning in the third baseman, Blake Wilson, the batter. Cardinal infield in double play depth with runners on the corners. They now let trail by five runs. They took the first two games by a combined three run differential. The first pitch to Wilson as the runner goes from first will be way up and out. Witten easily takes second base with Malcolm Moore jumping out of his crouch to nab that fastball that uh, Blake Wilson was ducking out of the way of. And that will bring out Thomas Eager. Someone getting ready in the bullpen for the Cardinal. I'm sure this is more to talk to him about gripping the baseball more than anything else because Joey Volchko has looked wild thus far and the call will be made to the bullpen so a mid at bat pitching change made as Joey Volchko just couldn't grip the baseball so he'll be down after just six pitches and the new pitcher in for the Cardinal looks to me like Aiden Keenan so freshman to freshman go to the Cardinal we will be back to the action with runners on the corners with one out here in the third inning as Stanford trails by five runs here in Seattle on KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. So after six Rick Vaughn-esque pitches, uh, the hand of Joey Volchko, the new pitcher, will be another freshman, Aiden Keenan. Keenan, the highly touted right-hander, since 6'1", 192. Comes in this game with a ERA at nine. They're a small sample. Pitched in just four innings. Striking out six, walking four, three hits, four runs, all earned. Also has a save charged to his name. And a loss. Last time out was on Thursday action at Cal. First pitch in this 1-0 count to Blake Wilson will miss just outside with a breaking ball. So a after the curveball miss, it's actually 2-0. The change was made in a 1-0 count to Keenan. No matter we're here in the bottom of the third, there are two runners on in scoring position. Cardinals trail by a score of 6-1. Keenan looks at the runner third, now third and sends home. Ball's hit up the middle, but Cobb will glove it cleanly. The throw will be to first, and the runner comes across the score. 
to an RBI ground out. Cardinal trading out for a run. Something I'm sure they'd love to do is the score now goes to 7 1. On the play, Witten also moved to third. So they're now two out here in the third inning. Runner on third base. Cardinal down by six runs after this crooked number. So said coming in, Cardinal had Cardinal pitching staff had held their opponent to five or less in each of their last eight games. That streak is now broken. New batter is the catcher, Colin Blanchard. First pitch of Blanchard is below the knees, ball one. Blanchard in the split time role at catcher has performed well. Five for 14 on the year with four walks. It was hit by a pitch first time up. This next pitch was well up and out. We're going to change up there. They got, uh, just slipped out of the hand of Keenan. Big side on the mound for the right hander. Now he steps and delivers, hit high and hard out to center field. Ranging back is Ethan Hot, still going back towards the warning track. And he will make the play over the shoulder, tumbling to the ground right against the wall. Terrific play that will end the inning. So seven runs come across, and they're luckily not any more, as we'll now go to the top of the fourth inning. The Cardinal Trail by six runs here from Seattle, Washington, KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Back in top of the fourth inning, the first pitch, Timo Becerra. Strike one call, that one was a generous call. Looked a little bit outside to me, but Spencer to start. The starter for the Huskies still out on the mound to protect the 7-1 lead. The 0-1 pitch, this one further outside. Hopefully umpire Sean Rakos could not give that one. The lone run, charge to start, came off the bat of Malcolm Moore. Solo shot in the first inning. The 1-1 way up and in. Becerra flinched out of the way. A crooked number put up in the bottom of the third for the Huskies. They took their first lead of the series, first lead of the Pac-12 campaign. They now lead by six. 2-1 pitch way up and out. Speared by the glove of Colin Blanchard behind the dish. It's now a 3-1 count. Still a lot of action to be played today. Definitely not a game that's over. As a 3-1 pitch will be hit high, but foul, out of play. Full count now to the third baseman, Becerra. Jerry Barra, the Husky first baseman, splitting the first and second base bag. The rest of the infield in the shift to the left side. And the full count pitch at the knees, called strike three. Becerra can't lift the bat off the shoulder. It's the first out. Comes via the backward K. So base is empty, one out. It'll be Ethan Hot up now for the Cardinal. Desart comes set, steps and delivers. Fastball low and outside, ball one. Start big side on the mound. No high leg kick. Delivers the fastball in the zone. Strike. Cardinal are 0 for 4 with runners on. All four with the runners in scoring position. No one on here for a Ethan Hot. His next pitch will be below the knees. Ball two. Been a considerable amount of base traffic. For the starter to start, to start I should say, is a 2-1 pitch. Will be high and hard to left field. The left fielder Guerrero ranging back at the warning track and he'll get in and out of his glove. Bounces against the wall. Ethan Hot rounding second will get to second base. Sliding could have been standing, but for dramatic effect, took a slide in and he is having himself a series. Hits in all three games after his first career multi-hit game with three hits in Friday's action. Another double yesterday and a double today. Is that ball looked like it could have been gone off the bat with the wind blowing in and the rain still uh, pouring from the sky. The conditions are not 
voting well for fly balls. As Guerrero is ranging back, the ball actually hit him in the glove, but it scored it out. Most certainly will be ruled a double. Owen Cobb now the batter. The first pitch he sees. Slider misses low and out. Cardinal looking to claw back into this game. Show up 7-1 here in the away fourth inning. Hot dancing at second. The pitch delivered to Cobb in the zone. Strike two. Strike one, I should say. It was fastball. So 1-1 one, one count. One out. Hot the lone runner at second base. Owen Cobb, the second baseman, up to the plate to hit. The start steps and delivers. Hit high and hard, but too high over towards left field. Guerrero ranging over towards the foul line into foul territory. Finds it in the air, and he will catch it. Wind playing some tricks, but not enough tricks to keep Owen Cobb alive. It's the second out of the inning will come via a foul out. A deep foul out. Small confines of Husky Ballpark, but they will play big today with this weather. So two out now, and Court McDonald needs to get a hit, or at least keep the line moving for the Cardinal to claw back with at least a run in this inning. First pitch to the lefty, inside, ball one. Desar on the mound, wearing purple top, purple hat, purple undershirt. Then all white pants, no purple whatsoever on the pants, has them under the heel of his of his shoe. In the 1-0 pitch, showing Bunt McDonald. He lays one down, but he'll trickle foul. Heavy shift on for the Huskies. But the third baseman Wilson is protecting against that bunt. McDonald tried one anyway. It would have to be a perfect one for him to reach base. So 1-1 one, one now the count. Lefty crowding the plate as the pitch will be inside. McDonald had to move out of the way of that fastball. Husky faithful in attendance. All high in the bleachers to avoid the rain. As the 2-1 pitch will be swung and chopped over to the first base. Ibarra gloves it on two hops and will take it himself to the bag for the third out of the inning. Hot doubles, but around that, the start works three three outs without anyone coming across. This will now go to the home fourth. Cardinal trail the Huskies by a score of 7-1 here on KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Back now for the home fourth. There'll be Aiden Keenan on the mound again for the Cardinal. He's the third pitcher they've used out of, or in total, second pitcher out of the pen, I should say. Lines are closing both for Nick Dugan and Joey Volchko. Dugan's line ends with two and a third innings, three strikeouts, two walks, five hits, seven runs, all earned. All seven runs that have scored by the Huskies have been charged to Nick Dugan. Joey Volchko only faced one batter and walked him. The does also finish with two wild pitches. Keenan came in, got two outs, without earning any uh, base runners being charged to him. Now he'll start the home fourth after the Huskies batted around last inning. He'll be the top of the order now due up. So one, two, three, Clayton, Arquette, Ibarra. Rain still coming down in Seattle. It's a light rain, but it will certainly mess with the pitcher's uh, grip on the baseball, especially for breaking offerings. The first pitch from Keenan of the inning. Oh, a breaking ball that slipped out of the hand. Clayton had a duck out of the way of that one. Came across at 75 miles an hour, but 75 that was aiming right at his head. Got out of the way, and now the 1 0 pitch. The swing and a miss. That was a beautiful breaking ball. Went to the exact same pitch, but located it well as Clayton is walking back towards the dugout. Uh, I'm guessing the, to retape or respray the bat. Yes, he will. It's also been a problem for hitters just to grip the, the bat. We saw Jeter Ibarra. Loses, basically, uh, lose the bat when he was swinging and missing at a changeup out of the hand of Nick Dugan. Bat went flying. Now Clayton trying to avoid repeating that feat with better grip. Is now we're back to the action. Clayton steps and levers the one-two, oh, buzzes him up and in with a fastball. 
It's really not what Keenan's trying to do. It's just the rain is making it tough for these pitchers to locate their pitches effectively. And the Sunday getaway game, not very not very good baseball weather as the 2-1 pitch will be at the knees below the knees with the breaking ball. Walks have been an issue today. And the 3-1 pitch called strike two. Clayton started to take his walk to first base. I thought that one looked good at the bottom of the part of the zone. Home plate umpire Sean Rakos agreed. Clayton would disagree, but the count is now full. No one on, no one out here in the home fourth. Washington leads by a score of 7-1. And the full count pitch will be hit high, but foul out of play. Cannon sitting in the upper 80s with that fastball. The last one coming across the plate at 88 miles an hour. Keenan with a full count pitch. This one misses badly. Fastball nowhere near the zone as Clayton will now take his walk. So a leadoff walk starts the home fourth. It will now be Ivar Aket, the line second baseman, up to bat. Arquette is a homer in the, each of the first two games of this series. It's an RBI fielder's choice 0 for 2 thus far today. David Esker now takes a slow walk out to talk to Sean Rakos, the home plate umpire. One thing I can think of it'd be concerning is the weather, as his pitchers are most certainly struggling with the conditions. Might as well lodge some sort of an argument with your team down 7 to 1. As Rakos is walking back to the game, Esker is being heated. He is saying something. They're playing music over it, so I have no clue. The mic's not picking up what's going on. But Esker is incensed with home plate umpire Sean Rakos. As he finally turns back around and goes towards the away dugout down the third base side. I'm, I'm really not sure what other than the weather it could have been about. Back to the action will be Ivar head up to face the freshman Aiden Keenan. The first pitch in the zone at the knee, strike one. Fastball there at 87 miles an hour. Asker pacing, looking annoyed over there in the third base dugout. And the pitch, trying to go front door with the curveball, couldn't get the bite back over the plate. Keenan wants a new ball after not liking the grip on the, the last one. <laughs> just threw out another baseball. Saw this happen in the major leagues a few times. I think it was at a Guardians game where a, a pitcher kept rejecting baseballs until they finally sprung out the tarp for a rain delay. It's now the 1-1 pitch. will be swung on chopped foul over to the Stanford dugout. 7-1 is the score. Huskies lead the Cardinal. We're here in the home fourth. One runner at first base is Cam Clayton. Two-hole hitter Ivar Cat at the dish. No one out in the inning. Cardinal in double, double play depth. The one-two pitch misses low. Fastball there from the freshman Keenan. Keenan, whose ERA is down to 771 on the year, comes set the belt. Working out the stretch. The runner goes to second. The pitch was hit. Out of play foul. So a run and hit on for the Huskies. And Arquette does well to protect. Clayton got a good jump at second base. Malcolm Moore has a great arm behind the dish. So it would have been a play down at second base had Arquette not spoiled that one off. More new baseballs in play now. As Keenan gets one that he seems to like. He steps and delivers, and the ball is hit high in the air towards first base side foul. Jimmy Nada ranging over towards the Husky dugout, and will have room to make the play. So a high foul pop out, the first out of the inning for the Cardinal, and I'll bring up the three-hole hitting first baseman, Jeter Ibarra. 
Haskins stay for shortstop moves into the shift had been playing to the right side of the second base bag now takes a couple steps over to the left side of the bag Owen Cobb deep in the hole and shallow right field the first pitch to Ibarra try to go back door the breaking ball couldn't get the bite last one came across the plate at just 72 miles an hour so a soft breaking curve there from Aiden Keenan Ibarra had a two run doubles last time up now the pitch breaking ball again misses outside again Keenan already wants another baseball he is they're going through them quickly here I mean I can't blame them it must be very difficult to get a grip on the ball big side on the mound from the righty now he steps and delivers high fastball 3-0 now the count not too many happy fans here in Seattle despite the Huskies 7-1 lead in the home fourth Bark in the park is the promotion today as the 3-0 pitch misses inside, ball four. I was hoping I'd see some Huskies here. Uh, though I, I see some dogs. There are no, no potential mascots for the baseball team with their six-run lead. Now 2-1, one, one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. AJ Greer, the batter. Top four batters for the Huskies have been their real weapons. Clayton, Arquette, Ibarra, and Guerrero. Guerrero has struggled a little bit this year, though he's a high pedigree player. Average won't stay at 213 for long. Keenan steps and delivers inside breaking ball, ball one. Guerrero has been getting on base, but has not been slugging very effectively. 605 OPS is before the 1 0 pitch. Thomas Eager takes a walk out to talk to his freshman righty. No one, oh, there is some action in the bullpen, but no one warming up as if they're about to come into the game for Stanford. This is most certainly just a mound visit. Try to talk strategy and see what pitches are working. Try to figure out how to grip the ball. What to go to, what to call, what he's feeling comfortable with, what he's not. As home plate umpire Sean Rakos takes the slow walk out to the mound. Tell Thomas Eager he's out of time. Already through an hour and a half here with only one out in the bottom of the fourth. The Sunday getaway game from rainy, cloudy Seattle, Washington. Great Seattle weather. Typical Seattle weather, I should say. This daylight savings. The final daylight savings day. At least. We all hope so after losing an hour of sleep last night. As A.J. Guerrero is now the batter. Big side from the righty. Takes a practice cut. Now steps in the box. Right on right matchup. 2-1. One, one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Five hit for the Huskies so far. But the problem for the Cardinals has been the, the walks issued. Five walks issued. First pitch swing and a miss over a breaking ball. Guerrero expecting a fastball. Didn't get one there. 1-1 one, one, now the count. Long pause on the mound from Keenan. Turns attention home. Loaders fastball hit high in the air to right field. Moving under it's Brady Reynolds. Coming in a little bit. Tagging at second base will be a Clayton. Clayton going to third. The throw comes to second. So it'll be a, a fly out to right. Now runners on the corners with two out. Reynolds decided to throw that ball into Owen Cobb rather than Timo Becerra. The throw is to second base. Allow Clayton to take third with two out in the inning. So takes a base hit for Michael Brown to bring the Huskies eighth run across. Or a wild pitch. It's Gripping the ball is no sure thing in today's game. So we have a pause in the game before. The umpires are communicating with each other, not completely sure what this could be about. As uh, I think it was just to confirm they each have two mound visits remaining as umpires help two and two. So two runners on, two out. Clayton at third, Ibarra at first. 
First pitch, Michael Brown. Check swing, high fastball, didn't go. So one of the count. Infield in a deep shift, Owen Cobb, both feet on the outfield turf. Haskins with his, just playing to the left side of the bag. The pitch will be a backdoor breaking ball, can't get the bite, ball two. Second base, lone base open with two out. Last time up, Michael Brown singled home a run and came across the score later in the inning. That third inning where the Huskies batted around. A crooked number, seven runs in the pitch, high fastball. Kenan already wants a new baseball. He's been going through those. Gone through a few packs already as the freshman. Steps off the mound, wrapping it up as, as he likes. On the first base side of the rubber, right on left matchup is the right he delivers. The 3 0 pitch, pitch misses. So Michael Brown will take his walk. Bases are loaded with two outs for the switch hitter Carson Olin. Olin, a primary catcher, is actually listed as a catcher on the Huskies' information. Though has only played in right field, or at least only started in right field this year. In the first pitch, the switch hitter will be a breaking ball. They'll miss outside. Base is juiced as the Huskies lead by six and look to add more. Rainy Sunday getaway game from Seattle. Cardinal looking for the sweep. They need some offense to be able to do so as the 1-0 pitch at the knees strike one on a fastball. Nick Dugan started this game for Stanford only with a managed to work two and a third innings before Joey Wolchko came in, delivered six pitches, six wild pitches, and then was relieved by Aiden Keenan in the 1-1 pitch backdoor breaking ball strike two. Husky faithful not so sure about that call. Carson Nolan wasn't either as in Keenan wants a new baseball already. Some real heckling going on by the limited crowd. Heckling in all three games towards the umpire as Keenan steps off. Not pitch clock related. I think he was actually just confirming the count. One, two is the count. Three on, two out here in the bottom of the fourth. Big pitch from the freshman. Keenan comes set, steps and delivers. Back to a breaking ball. Can't get the call. Rain coming down a little bit heavier. Rain was supposed to have subsided by now, but does not comply with the baseball wishes. Big side, now steps and delivers to Keenan. Backdoor breaking ball, called strike three. The Husky faithful will not like that one as the bases are juiced, but Keenan gets out of it without anyone coming across the score. We'll now go to the fifth inning as Stanford will look to chip in to their 7-1 to deficit here on KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Back now for the away fifth inning as Spencer Desart still the pitcher on for the Huskies. The lone run he allowed came back in the first inning off the bat of Malcolm Moore. A solo shot, number five on the season for the catcher. Home runs in back-to-back days as he is now the batter up. Batting just 208 on the year, but the slugging is at 509. Also quite a few walks. Pitchers have been very careful to the draft-eligible sophomore. Understandably so. He is one of the top catchers in the nation. And a long pause before he gets back into the batter's box to see his first pitch of this fifth inning. In the Stanford bullpen, Ben Reimers is now working. So could see the freshman, the third freshman righty in at some point for the Cardinal. He would uh, likely come in the next time we see Aiden Keenan come into trouble. But before we get to that, it'll be Spencer to start working for the Huskies. It looked at pretty to retain his 7-1 to lead as before he does so the umpires are going to talk to him 
and they're now going Jason Kelly the Washington manager is now coming out they're talking having a talk with him as well they're making a motion as if it's something with the glove possibly of the start I'm wondering if they're having him checked for some foreign substance or if they're just bringing him off the field for rain as everyone's coming off the field this can't be good gives him the ball and yeah everyone's coming off the field so we might be in a delay this isn't good in a getaway game uh, drop dead time for the game it's probably about 530 so any delays mean we are less likely to get baseball in through here could mean less time for a Stanford comeback or if you don't finish it now it would just not be a game at all as we will figure out what's going on I'll figure out what if this is in fact a rain delay uh, what the procedure is but until that time we will leave you with messages you're listening to KZSU 2 there's the Stanford women's basketball the conference championship against USC is going on right now in KZSU 1 if you want something else to listen to during this delay we'll be back to ap- action hopefully from Seattle Washington uh, if not please turn into the main broadcast on KZSU 1 as hopefully the Pac-12 the women's team rounds out their Pac-12 campaign the ultimate Pac-12 campaign with another conference championship a very illustrious program so you're listening to this is Tyler Snyder from Husky Ballpark and well hope uh, hope you hear from me soon I can't promise anything and just as I got the text that we're going to resume play we hear from the scoreboard announcer himself that we're resuming play so reminder we are in the top of the fifth inning from rainy Seattle, Washington on this getaway Sunday game between Stanford and UW and Cardinal trail by 7-1 to one. first pitch to Malcolm Moore misses outside one ball, no strikes the lefty backstop is homered scored the lone run today for the Cardinal next pitch will be home run hack but barely got a piece of it strike on a foul tip Rain has actually completely stopped right now. It's not supposed to stay this way for very long. But I'm sure Spencer Desart, the starter on the mound still for the Huskies, will gladly take it. It's the 1-1 pitch. Misses outside on a changeup. Actually, a fastball there. Two-seamer. The 2-1 pitch. Yeah, high in the air out of the left field. Guerrero ranging over. Back a step, and he'll make the play for the first out of the inning. So one out in the top of the fifth. We'll bring up the three-hole hitter, Jimmy Nadai. Nadai doubled uh, doubled earlier. Hit his first career home run yesterday. Batting above 400 on the year, on base above 500. See the deep shift. First pitch. Upstairs, ball one. Actually, on base is 500 into the set bat, carrying a slugging of 667. So, two thirds a bag per at bat. Next pitch is low. Ball two. Nat Eye with his closed stance. Ready for the 2 0. Hits a high, but out of play foul. Gorgeous scenery in the backdrop of Husky Ballpark. Cascades towering in the backdrop of a skyline of Bellevue in the distance. As Jimmy Nadai takes a walk over to the dugout, probably to regrip the bat. Yes, it will be to do so. Grip has been a big issue today with all the rain. We're only in the fifth inning. It's been a two hour game so far. Probably can't go much more than two and a half hours longer. Huskies already have a tie in the season due to a getaway game going too long. If the Cardinal are able to pull back runs if the pitch in that eye will be hit up the middle the shortstop Clayton cannot make the play diving on the uh, goes off his leather into left field. Guerrero throws it back into second base and that eye will be held to a single. So second hit of the day for the first baseman will bring up the, uh, the right fielder Brady Reynolds.
That has yet to be retired in today's game. A double, a single, and a walk. Brady Reynolds now the batter. One on, one out here in the top of the fifth. Cardinal trail by six runs. Need a rally to get back into this getaway game. Looking for the sweep. First pitch to Reynolds. Way outside. Blanchard, the backstop, did well to spear that one. That I guess short lead over at first. Reynolds holding the bat on his left shoulder, standing upright in the box. The pitch, right down palm drive, strike one. Reynolds taps the plate with his with his bat. Now prepares for the one one pitch, swing and a miss over the top of the slider. The starter to start up to 88 pitches on the day. See how much gas he has left in the tank. I can't see the Husky bullpen at all from my vantage point. I imagine there's someone working. The one-two pitch would be chopped foul over by first base. Would have been a problematic ball for Brady Reynolds had it stayed fair. Reynolds, the freshman, taking a sweet time before stepping back in the box. To start from the stretch, delivers. Backdoor slider can't get the call. 2-2 two, two the count. Now the 2-2 two, two pitch from Desart. Will be chopped foul behind Brady Reynolds. Doing well to stay alive and work the, the pitch count, work the wear into Sart's arm. That was pitch number 91 on the day. Reynolds looking to avoid the strikeout for the second time today, has also drawn a walk. Now the 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss. Couldn't chase up speeds with the fastball. Caught the timing behind it. He'll bring up the designated hitter, Jake Sapien. So two out in the inning. The lone runner on is Jimmy Nadai at first base. Sapien walked twice in his first two plate appearances, yet to record that bat in this series. The first pitch to him be low, ball one. Sapien has drawn quite a few walks in his year thus far. The pitch. He hit off to the right side. He'll get through a big hole out there. Nadai will stay at second base. So a station to station single is the Cardinals' second hit of the inning. Two on, two out will be Trevor Haskins now the batter. That was the first hit of the Cardinal with a runner on. They are still 0 for 6 with a runner in scoring position. Trevor Haskins trying to make it one for seven. Carl down by six runs in the fifth inning. Need a rally to sweep the series. Second straight sweep it would be. Throwing bunt, Haskins pulls back. The ball's high. Haskins has struggled at the plate thus far this season. Adding just 163. Three doubles, the only extra base hits. The pitch hit high but foul out of play. Two out here in the fifth inning. Start on the rubber from the stretch. Delivers ball in the dirt. It's pitch number 97. This 2-1 offering will be hit out of play foul again by Haskins. Couldn't catch up to the fastball. Still coming across the plate at 88 miles an hour. Has not lost any velocity. Has to start throughout this outing. Runner at first base is Jake Sapien. At second is Jimmy Nadai. No one has scored this first inning. Since the first inning for the Cardinal. As a 2-2 pitch will be hit foul again out of play. 
Slider that time would have been called strike three. Haskins did well to stay alive. Do the 2-2 again. Two on, two out. 2-2 two, two count. And the pitch. Be hit out to the right side. It'll get through the hole. Okay, that's right center field gap. Coming around to score is Jake Sapien to third base and staying at third base will be Sapien. It was Nadi that came around to score. Haskins just has a single. Ball is delivered to the infield quickly by the Husky outfield. So runners at the corners with two out. As the Washington lead is cut to 7-2. to two. And Timo Becerra is now the batter for the Cardinal. And that might end the day for Spencer to start. Jason Kelly has made the call to the bullpen. So we'll be back for the top of the from the top of the fifth inning. Sanford trails by a score of seven to two here on KZSU two. Sanford Student Radio Network. New pitcher for the Huskies is a right hander, six foot six right hander, Isaac Yeager. Yeager, local kid from Seattle. Be coming on to make this appearance. To be appearance number seven on the year for him. Been a reliever that's gotten a lot of work out of the pen. Through six appearances, has recorded ten innings, nine strikeouts, four walks, nine hits, four earned runs. That's a 360 ERA. Runners on the corners, two outs. The first pitch, right down Palm Drive to Timo Becerra. Fastball clocking in at 87 miles an hour. Against Becerra, the Husky infield in a deep shift. Sarah's 0 for 2 thus far today. Looking for a hit here to continue the rally. The pitch. Check swing on a slider. Did he go? No, he didn't. Close call there. But Becerra held up. At least according to first place, first base umpire Bradley Hungerford. Becerra holding the bat vertical on the ground. Towards the ground. As the pitch. Be it high in the air to foul territory. Will it stay in play? As the left field arranging towards foul territory, and Guerrero makes the play, crossing over the left field foul line. So a high fly out, foul out, I should say, ends the rally for the Cardinal. One scores, but they only cut the lead to 7-2. to two. We'll be back for the home fifth here from Seattle, Washington, on KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. They're just four innings of work. Walks have been an issue for the Cardinal pitching staff. Six walks to just four strikeouts. Also five hits, seven runs. All were earned to Nick Dugan. It's the final line on Aiden Keenan. One and two-thirds innings, one strikeout, three walks, no hits, no runs. Reimers come set for the first pitch. High leg kick delivers foul. Grounded over Trevor Haskins. Haskins gloves it cleanly. Strong throw to Madai will be not in time. One hop to throw. Would have been an incredible play had he been able to complete it. But was unable to do so. As Carson Witten reaches via an infield single for the first hit of the inning for the Washington Huskies. One on, no one out. It'll be Blake Wilson, the third baseman in today's game. Up now. Big side on the mound for the freshman Rhymers. Freshman on freshman, freshman on freshman showdown right now. Right on rides well, first pitch in the zone on a breaking ball. A slider there, clocking at 80 miles an hour, strike one. Decent sized lead over at first base by Witten. Check on the runner there, diving back safely. As the wind has completely stopped here, has been blowing in from center. Check on the runner again. This is a closer play, but safe again. Is there something interesting with Jamie Nadai's glove, possibly? We'll pause to look at it as we're back to the action. I think he's just messing with it. Maybe tightening it. It's now the 0-1 pitch to Blake Wilson. It's delivered outside slider. Doesn't miss by too much. Malcolm Moore likes the location. It's 
Seven to two is the Washington lead here in the bottom of the fifth. One on, no one out here. Grimers comes set, delivers a pitch in the zone. Blake Wilson disagreed, strike two. This is the first lead of the series to the Huskies. There's a big one of that. Check on the runner at first, diving back safely. Rimers comes set for the one two. And he delivers. Inside breaking ball, can't get the call. Almost there. The front door slider almost came back over the plate. Sean Rakos didn't give the uh, strike three call. Two to two is now the count. Rimer's big side now delivers. Ball is grounded over to third base. Glow clean by Becerra. Third to second in time. The third to first will be in time as well. Five, four, three, double play. Gets outs number one and two of this bottom of the fifth. After an infield single is erased via ground and double play, there'll be the nine hole hitter, left handed catcher, Colin Blanchard, up now for the Huskies. Try to keep the inning alive. All seven of the Husky runs came in that third inning. A crooked number. Stanford scored two runs, one in the first and one in the fifth. Blanchard 0 for 1. First pitch he sees is low on a, look like a change up there from Reimers. Deep shift on in the, in the infield. Both Haskins and Cobb playing with their feet on the grass or the green turf, I should say. Pitch to Blanchard, fouled off into the Stanford dugout. Blanchard, the catcher, has a deep stance, bends his knees very much, holds the bat right on the left shoulder. Fairly open stance with his legs far apart. White pants, white shoes as Reimer sets, delivers, just low on another changeup. Malcolm Moore liked the location, but couldn't get a swing from the backstop. Primer's deep side of the mound. Now delivers the 2 1. Strike 2. Blanchard disagreed. There's a slider there in the inner side of the plate. Blanchard was hit by a pitch in his first plate appearance back in the third inning. Look to get on base again here with this 2 2 pitch. He'll be upstairs. Ball 3. So full count, base no full count, two out. Bases are empty. Primer's looking to end the fifth inning unscathed. And the pitch will be at the knees below the knees. Ball four. Did not miss by much. Stone cold take by Colin Blanchard, and he will take his bag, and the lineup card will flip over. It'll be Cam Clayton now up for the Huskies. So one on, two out here in the bottom of the fifth. Deep shift on for the Cardinal again as they've done against Clayton. Waving the bat over his right shoulder. The first pitch he sees, front door breaking ball, strike one. Reimers relies heavily on that slider, has very good action to it. Comes set at the third base side of the rubber. High leg kick delivers. Slider can't get a swing from Clayton. Miss low. Stanford in their red tops. Gray but pants with two red stripes running down the sides. Rhymers on the mound with red shoes. White numbering as the come set delivers. High slider Clayton ducks out of the way of. A little bit of rain is falling again here in Seattle. 
Not as much as it was earlier when we had a short delay. Now the 2 1 pitch. Upstairs and in. Ball three. After two quick outs, we had double play. Reimers has lost a little bit of command of the strike zone. Walked the 9 0 hitter, now behind 3 and 1 against Cam Clayton. Reimers comes set and delivers. Ball is missed. Slider low. So two straight walks. A little two out rally for the Huskies, and it's come via the free passes. Now bring up Ivar Arquette, dangerous second baseman. The sophomore second baseman missed considerable time last year via injury, or due to injury, I should say. Uh, though when he was healthy, he was the starter. And has proved his coach Jason Kelly right thus far this year. Sporting an 880 OPS, including two homers this series. The first pitch from Reimers, foul tip, back behind him. Chased after a fastball, timed it up right, but it was a little too high. Arquette 0 for 3 today, but with a RBI off a of fielder's choice back in the third inning when the Huskies batted around. Also came around to score in that inning. Reimers delivers the 0-1. Is it high in the air in foul territory? I don't think that's going to stay in play. Nadi giving it chase and it will be in the bleachers. So 0-2 count now to the second baseman. We're here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Washington leads by a score of 7-2 against Stanford who are looking for the sweep. As the ball keeps slipping down, some kids chasing after it. it. Kept going further and further down as three kids were giving it chase. The 0-2 delivery from Ben Reimer. Swing and a miss from Ivar Kett. And that will retire the side. Two come across via two out. Uh, free pass is issued. But no one comes across the scores. We'll now go to the away sixth inning here from rainy Seattle, Washington. Stanford trails by score 7 2 on KZSU, Stanford Student Radio Network. Back now is the Huskies have taken the field for the top of the sixth inning. It'll be the 8 9 1 due up for the Cardinal, Ethan Hotto and Cobb and Court McDonald. Had a rain delay earlier today. Hopefully the rain will subside as the first pitch from Jaeger is in the zone on a fastball coming across at 88 miles an hour, strike one. Hot has lived up to his last name this series as the next pitch to him is a slider that will miss low and outside. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch from Jaeger. Big side on the mound. High leg kick. Steps and delivers. Fastball. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Some heckling. Off that 90 mile an hour fastball is the one two pitch. Be chopped up the middle. Jaeger, incredible play to Spirit. Like underhand toss after a windmill with his arms. It's well in time to retire Ethan Hot. And it just reached across his body, the righty. Ball is going to the, the right hand side of the righty, and with his left hand, gloved hand, speared it. So the chopper pretty softly hit up the middle. That'll be the first out of the sixth inning. It'll bring up Owen Cobb. Cobb digs into the right-hander batter's box. The first pitch to him. Inside slider. He'll miss. Jaeger wearing number zero. A tall, lanky righty. The black mask on his, head, on his face as the next pitch is in the zone at the knees with a fastball. Wearing a, a white chain. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch. Be at the knees again, but below the knees. A very similar location. But Reiko says this one was a little bit lower. So it's ball two. No one on, one out here. 
in the top of the sixth. Jaeger delivers the 2-1. It'll be chopped over to the shortstop, Clayton. Clayton gloves it cleanly at the throw to first. And Ibarra gets it in time. Second out of the inning. So two out. The lineup card will flip over. And for the fourth time, Court McDonald is up. 0 for 3 thus far, looking to get the monkey off his back. McDonald's average has dipped to 308. Came into today sporting a 327 average. First pitch to him outside. Miss on a fastball, two seamer. Right on left matchup as the Huskies infield is in a deep shift. Third base protecting the bunt. The 1 0 will be hit foul out of play. And the 1-1 pitch to McDonald inside, moves out of the way. McDonald has won a job in the outfield under David Esker this year. Through his contact hitting and speed. The 2-1 check swing didn't go. Counts now 3-1 to the left fielder. Came into this year as a platoon. It was hot in McDonald, splitting time in center field. Now it's been McDonald on the left full time as the 3-1 will be hit over to second base. Arquette from outfield grass throws over to first. And three ground outs, one, two, three, go the Cardinal. As we'll now head to the home sixth as the Huskies will look to build on to their 7-2 lead here from Seattle, Washington on KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. What day at the ballpark here at Seattle, Washington? As the rain has temporarily subsided after a short rain delay earlier, trying to still get as much baseball in as possible. Hopefully before the drop dead time, before we all need to catch our flights back to Palo Alto. Ben Reimers, the freshman, still dealing on the mound. Had a good inning last inning. Uh, worked around three base runners. Allowed a hit. Retired two running runners via a grounded double play. Then two two out walks. Exited unscathed as it will now go to the bottom of the sixth. First pitch, Giro Barrow skied in the air in the infield. Moving under it is Timo Becerra. High in the air now, still coming down, and he makes the play. So one pitch, one pop out goes Giro Ibarra. As the Huskies will look to build on to their 7-2 lead here in the bottom of the sixth with 1-L. It'll be A.J. Guerrero up next. AJ Guerrero, the outfielder from Washington, sitting straight up in the right hander batter's box, waving the bat over his right shoulder high in the air. The first pitch to him will be skied in the air over to right field. Actually, the center fielder, Ethan Hot, moving under it in right center, still going to right, and it will fall into his glove for the second out of the inning. Two pitches, two outs for Ben Reimers. Very efficient. As if we're worried about the time this game may end, that's a one way to smooth everyone's anxiety. Let's get two very quick outs. Michael Brown, the left-hand designated hitter, will now dig into the batter's box. Sporting his open stance with his feet far apart. The first pitch to him, strike one. Brown not wearing any batting gloves. Must be a cold day on the hands for him. Weather's in the upper 40s right now. Cloudy. Actually, as soon as I say that, the sun comes out. Is the 0 1 pitch. Oh, a swing and a miss. Got him to chase a beautiful slider there. Actually, it was a changeup. Pardon me. Reimers does not throw a changeup too often. Only really breaks it out against lefties, and that was one of his better ones yet. Reimers looking for the 1 2 3. Comes set, high leg kick, steps and delivers. Outside changeup, can't get the uh, swing. Well outside, trying to get Brown to chase. Brown saw that one easily. Owen Cobb at second base, playing more in shallow right field. The one-two pitch will be upstairs on the fastball.
Reimers comes set for the 2-2 pitch. On the third base side of the rubber. Steps and delivers, swinging high and hard to right field. Brady Reynolds going back at the warning track, and he will have room. Incredible play by Brady Reynolds. He just robbed a home run off the bat of Michael Brown. Wow, that was high in the air. I think the wind and rain knocked it down a little bit, but it was still going to be out of the ballpark had it not been for the leaping catch of Brady Reynolds. The freshman flashing leather as we'll now go to the seventh inning. Stanford looking to bite into the 7-2 to deficit they find themselves in here in Seattle, Washington on KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Malcolm Moore leading off the seventh inning. His third time leading off an inning. Not a position you want the powerful catcher to be in. The first pitch to him will buzz him inside on a fastball from Isaac Yeager. Moore responsible for one of the Cardinals' two runs today. A solo shot in the first. Got the scoring underway. It's the 1-0 pitch. He hit hard, but foul. A web gem from Brady Reynolds ended the last inning, and he will be up third in this inning. Jimmy Nadai, the batter between him and Moore. Hard hit foul balls have been a theme for Malcolm Moore. Kept one fair earlier today. The 1-1 one, one pitch will be outside miss. Moore with his open stance gets ready for the 2-1. He'll hit this one foul out of play. The skies are starting to clear up a little bit here in Washington. Some sun poking out between the clouds. No rain at the moment. Wind is pretty calm. Birds flying over Lake Washington into the ballpark. The 2-2 pitch inside. Not sure what the appeals of the purple and gold faithful were for that pitch. That was pretty clearly inside. Now the full count pitch. Swing and hit foul out of play. So we'll do it again for the full count. Moore looking for his 12th walk and to avoid his 10th strike out of the year. The home run leader for the Cardinal with a full count pitch will swing and hit one to foul but hard again. I think he just chased ball four and I think he knows it. Smoked that ball but couldn't keep it in fair territory. I think Malcolm Moore should try out cricket. He has quite a few of those that are super long hit balls, but foul. Now the full count pitch again. Swing and hit into play. He'll go to the second baseman, Arquette. Arquette range into his left. will make a throw over to Ibar at first base for the out. So long at that, but a fruitless at that for Malcolm Moore. As he grounds out for the second time today, I'll bring up the man that's yet to be retired. The man from the land down under, Jimmy Nadai. Double, a walk, and a single. He's gone so far. Also scored. Came around to score in the fifth inning after his single. The second run of Cardinals Day. The first pitch to him from Jaeger will be chopped over third base. High chopping ball, but it'll go foul over the head of Blake Wilson. Had he kept that one fair, that would have been an unconventional double. But was unable to leave that one on the right side of the third base bag. Holding the bat on his right shoulder, Jaeger. Now comes set pitches. And he'll, now he hits this one fair over to the right field, ranging over the foul territory. Actually goes foul in the end. Had a lot of spin on that ball. I thought the batter was going to be a fly out to the right fielder, o Olin. Uh, but kept going and going. I thought it was going to be a double, and then suddenly it was going foul. So two foul balls start the at-bat for Jimmy Nadai. That is ninth double of the year earlier today. Is hit safely in all but one of Stanford's games this year, sporting a 418 average. Taking his time before getting back in the batter's box as he tends to do, especially with Isaac Yeager working fast. The second he comes in the batter's box, Isaac Yeager delivers. Swing and a miss is strike three. Now they are tired for the first time today, and it's via the K. With two outs, it'll be the man that ended last inning with a web gym, Brady Reynolds.
Reynolds 0 for 2 with a walk and two strikeouts. Looking for a three outcome performance of the homer. The first pitch to him inside fastball, a miss. Husky infield playing on heavily the pole. The 1 0. Miss outside with the fastball. Third baseman Blake Wilson protecting against the bunt. Closer to the third base side than the second base bag. So a big hole between him and the second base bag. The next pitch hit up towards that hole and it'll get through. Probably hit hard enough to be a single anyway. But the big hole over there helped. And Brady Reynolds backs up his glove with a single. So one on two out here at the top of the seventh. Cardinal looking to tally back some of their deficit. They trail 7-2 to two here from Seattle, Washington. Third game of the series. Cardinal took the first two. Jake Sapien, the designated hitter. Now the batter. First pitch to him. Outside fastball in the zone. Strike one. Sapien looking at his bat before digging back in the right-hander batter's box. Reynolds modest lead over at sec over first base, I should say. The pitched swing and foul tip in and out of the glove of Blanchard. Strike two. Rain is completely stopped here in Seattle. Good thing for the pitchers and maybe even for the hitters if the ball flies a little bit, oh, flies a bit longer. Cardinal pitchers were really struggling for grip earlier today. You can write off some of their pitching worries uh, based off that grip factor with the rain. Now the 0-2. Runner goes. The pitch is high. The throw down to second. And Reynolds sliding in will beat the tag. Actually, the ball trickles away from the second baseman Marquette anyway. So a stolen base from Brady Reynolds. It will now be a 1-2 count. Runner on second base. Two out here in the top of the seventh. The Cardinal trail by five runs. Base hit to the outfield would likely bring home Reynolds. Yeager looking at the second base now turns the attention home. Steps and delivers. Swing and a miss. Sapien retired for the first time today and it's via the K. Same as Nadai. And will now go to the home seventh. After you hear the sounds of the ballpark that includes some dogs barking. And take me out to the ball game. University of Washington's beautiful baseball facilities. The one critique I would have is that really weird rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Um, I'm not sure whose idea it was. I, I, it took me a while to even recognize it the first time it came on that it was even Take Me Out to the Ball Game. You hear it every game. I mean, I probably hear it 150 times a year, that song. And uh, if not be able to recognize it off the bat, is a little bit concerning. And it's, uh, I don't know, you hear it as well. So. You may disagree with me, but I, I personally am really not a fan of it. But back to the baseball action. Leading off the bottom of the seventh inning will be Carson Olin. He'll be the 6 seven, eight up to face the freshman Ben Reimers. He's completed two innings of scoreless baseball. The first pitch, Carson Olin, will be a backdoor breaking ball, strike one. Olin comes in this plate appearance. Was it one for two with a walk? Came around to score back in the third inning when the Huskies batted it around. Big side now steps and delivers high. I don't even know what that was. Maybe a changeup. I'm gonna guess it was a changeup. It just slipped out of the hand. Still some moisture in the air here in Seattle. Rhymers comes at the belt. High leg kick steps delivers. Fouled off straight behind Olin. Strike two.
Middle infield playing very far back. Outfield, good depth against the outfielder catcher. Olin and the pitch to him will be skied in the air over towards foul territory by the third base dugout. I don't think they will have room for it. They will not. Malcolm Moore gave it chase as the team of Becerra. They watched it fall harmlessly into the bleachers where all the fans are not sitting as everyone is taking cover under the covered part right by the uh, media box. some dogs in attendance uh, but the problem is the dogs have to be out in the rain so they're warm more earlier the pitch will be grounded up the middle Haskins ranging to it will get the throw it will be in time Nat I gets the ball in the glove before Olin reaches the bag so the first out of the inning comes via ground out 6-3 because Carson Olin it's a little bit softly grounded I thought it might be soft enough uh, it was straight to Char Haskins, but Haskins was sprinting from his pretty deep position at shortstop. I was a little concerned that he wasn't be able to get to the ball in time. Picked up a little bit of speed hitting off the back side of the mound. And Haskins got to it in time for the out. So now I'll bring up the outfielder, Carson Witten. First pitch to the center fielder, swing and miss. Got a chase on a slider. Some fans starting to move into the lower parts of the bowl with the rain completely subsiding here in Seattle. Now more wind blowing in from center field. The 0-1 pitch, grounded foul. Rolling ahead of the slider there, strike two. After I was a little concerned of the game time of this game, it's been some quick innings since the rain delay. I'm sure those in charge of scheduling are also happy. Now the 0-2 pitch from Reimers, yank this one. Try to go slider, slider, slider. But not a very well placed one here. Again, the infield, middle infield is back against the center fielder Cooper Witten. Reimer steps and delivers. Ball is hit out to Trevor Haskins. Dive in play. Can't get it. Ball goes to left field. It'll be a one-out single for Cooper Witten. Righty working out in the bullpen for the Cardinal. I'm going to guess it's Brian Speciok, the fourth of their freshman right arms. As the third baseman, Blake Wilson, is now the batter. Right on right matchup here. Wilson with hair spilling out of his purple helmet. Holding the bat above his right shoulder. Speshock delivers. High slider. Too high. Reimer delivers. Pardon me. We're here in the bottom of the seventh. Huskies lead the Cardinal by a score of seven to two. The delivery, skied foul, but out of play. Not a giving a chase, but it'll be in the bleachers. One one the count. One runner on. One runner out. Reimer's trying to keep the deficit where it is before the offense can hopefully tally a rally. Cardinal going for the sweep of their Pac-12 opening series after sweeping Rice last weekend. The 1-1 pitch from Reimer. Swing and a foul tip. Wilson looked a little foolish on a slider. I'm not sure how he got a piece of it, but he did. So 1-2 will be the count. Lone runner at first base is, is Witten. Blake Wilson, the batter now. Check on Carson Witten at first. Diving back safely well in time. Smallest crowd of the three-game weekend series today and Sunday game. Probably due to the weather. Car runner goes. Pitches sky in the air and out to left. Ranging back is Court McDonald. At the warning track, reaching up. He'll get the ball. Going back to first base is Witten. 
A long fly out off the bat of Blake Wilson. It's the second out of the inning for the Cardinal. Nine hole hitter and catcher now do up. It's Colin Blanchard. Lefty has the platoon advantage against the right hander, Ben Reimers. Not, I may be going for a pickoff play as they aren't. Reimers turns attention home, steps and delivers, ball low on a slider. Seven to two, the lead for Washington. All seven runs came back in the third inning. Cardinals scored two, one in the first, one in the fifth. Runner goes, pitch is low, throw down to second base, not in time. Good pitch to run on for Cooper Witten. There's a slider in the dirt. Strong throw for Malcolm Moore, but it was also high. Trevor Haskins wanted a low throw. The only chance was a spotless throw right on the foot. It's a tough play to make. It goes down as a stolen base. Yeah. Single to the outfield, likely score a run for Colin Blanchard in the pitch. This is outside, 3-0 no, now the count. One runner on at second base, two out here in the home seventh. Some, some sun shining through the clouds as the pitch in the zone, strike one. Shallow shift on for the Cardinal as Owen Cobb is playing with both feet in the outfield turf. Trevor Haskins holding the runner on at second. And the pitch swung and hit foul out of play. Count moves full with two out here. No force at second, so Witten in second will be at the mercy of the ball being put in play to get a head start. Lineup card will flip over if Blanchard can reach. The full count pitch. Swing foul tip. So we'll do it again. Got too much of it for Malcolm Moore to have any chance. Missed his leather completely. I think actually might have caught the, the leg of Malcolm Moore. And we are back ready for the next full count offering. Rhymer's on the mound. Comes at the belt. Steps and delivers. Hit high out of play. Foul again. Blanchard doing well to stay alive. Comes in this plate appearance with five walks through 20 plate appearances. So he, you would think he has good plate discipline based off those stats. Also six strikeouts. Reimer's looking to tally number seven for him. And the pitch outside. That'll be a walk. As Thomas Eager comes out to talk to his freshman righty, maybe in his day, as he will make the call to the bullpen. I am pretty sure it'll be Ryan Speshock to come in, but we'll be back with a definitive answer. After a quick break here in the bottom of the seventh, the Cardinal trail the Washington Huskies by a score of 7-2 to two on KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Back here for the bottom of the seventh inning. There are two on, two out. New pitcher for the Cardinal is Ryan Speshock. It's the fourth freshman righty for the Cardinal after the sophomore righty Nick Dugan started. Reimer's day is done. His line is not yet closed. Still responsible for two runners. He uh, finished with two and two-thirds innings. Two hits, one strikeout, three walks. Hasn't earned a run yet, uh, though. If Reimer's, or Speshock cannot get it out, that will likely change. He'll face Cam Clayton. The leadoff hitter is to the first pitch slider. They'll miss outside, ball one. Clayton is... 0 for 1, but with 3 walks in today's game. He has very good plate discipline. It's one of his reasons why he's such a highly tatted draft prospect in the MLB. The 1-0 pitch to him in the zone, strike 1. Fastball there. 88 miles an hour out of the hand of Speshock. Speshock comes into today's game sporting a 9 ERA. 6 innings, 6 earned runs, 5 strikeouts, 7 walks, 3 hits. 
So limiting the walks has been the issue for Speciok. He has good stuff. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Cam Clayton. Long pause in the mound. Now he delivers up and in. Oh, Cam Clayton stumbling out of the box backward there. Not too happy with that 89 mile an hour fastball. I think that's the third or fourth time that Clayton's had one uh, towards up and in like that in today's game. Now the 2 1 pitch from Speciok delivers its fouled right back towards me off the screen. 2 2 the count. Deuces are wild. 2 on, 2 out, 2 2. Stanford scored two, and they'll need to score five more to make this a ball game. They trail by seven to two. Each team, seven hits apiece. The issue has been Stanford pitching staff has walked quite a few, and the Husky hitters put together a rally in the third inning, scoring all seven runs back in that one frame. Now the 2-2 pitch from Speciok, looking at second base. Turns tension home, steps and delivers. Is it high and hard out to left field? Ranging back is Court McDonald. He will have room on the warning track, and he reaches a glove up, and the ball drops nicely into it. So two reach, but no one comes across the score for the Huskies. Will now go to the eighth inning. Safer need to claw back five runs. They trail seven to two here in Seattle on KZSU, Stanford Student Radio Network. Sorry for the quick transition, but back to action sooner than expected as Isaac Yeager has taken the mound. First pitch, Trevor Haskins grounded straight to second. Cam Clayton sliding play. Strong through the first will be in time. Hard hit ball, but at the wrong spot. Good defensive player Cam Clayton making a sliding play. Made it look smooth and seamless for the first out of the inning. After Haskins, it will be Becerra and then Hot do up in this away eighth. Cardinal need a rally. They trail by 7-2. to two. Defensive change made by the Huskies, as we'll get to after the pitch of Becerra. It's inside ball one. New center fielder in the game is the pitch to Becerra. It's grounded straight third base, in and out of the glove of the third base in Wilson. That was super hard hit ball, right hot corner. Not really a great chance for third baseman Wilson to squeeze it as they'll go down as a as a single off the bat of Timo Becerra. So anyway, it's uh, Cooper Witten going from center field to right. The right fielder, Carson Oland, is lifted and new center fielder is Luke Rolder. Showing bunt is hot and pulls it back because the ball is High and outside off a fastball. One on one out here in the eighth inning. Sophomore righty, six foot six, six foot six righty, Isaac Yeager, back out on the mound for the Huskies. Early return. This will be pitch number 38 after he checks on Basira at first. Diving back safely. Wind still blowing straight in from center field. Cloudy sky, but no rain. Is the one of hot showing bunt lays one down is the beauty going right to Jaeger. Jaeger makes the third of first base. And it'll be a sacrifice by Ethan Hot. That's actually a really good play by the pitcher Jaeger to cover ground coming off the mound, making an athletic play. Pitchers are athletes too. As I thought that was going to be a drag bunt, a successful drag bunt off the bat of a Ethan Hot, maybe not. Unintentional one. Is there now two out here in the eighth inning? Cardinal are down to their last four outs, so they need to claw back. Nine will hit her own cob up now. Ryan right matchup, the first pitch, swing and a miss. A sword there. Looked foolish on a slider. Cobb digging back in the box for the 0 1 pitch. Becerra dancing at second, tension to home. Was grounded straight to the second to the shortstop. Clayton Clayton makes a crow hop and a throw over, and that will retire the side. Timo Becerra gets to second base, but no one comes across the score. Cardinal need a rally, but first they need to keep the score where it is, seven to two. As we go to the home eighth here from Seattle, Washington, on KZSU Stanford Student Radio Network. Back now for the home eighth. 
Brian Spetschak back out on the mound. He'll be facing the 2-3-4 of this Husky batting order, trying to keep the deficit where it is. Cardinal trail by a score of 7-2 here from Husky Ballpark in Seattle, Washington. It'll be Iva Arquette, Jeter Ibarra, and A.J. Guerrero due up. First batter up is Iva Arquette, the Hawaiian righty. Second baseman is 0-4 for today. First pitch he sees is a high fastball that'll miss. Despite his 0-4, for he does have a run scored in RBI. When the Huskies batted around and put up seven spot back in the third. Next pitch, inside slider, just misses. Arcata homered in both Friday and Saturday's games. As Stanford took both game one and game two. The 2-0. Yeah, high in the air in foul territory. Nada ranging over, but he won't have room over by the Husky dugout. Strike one. Arquette digging back in the right-handed batter's box. Cardinal infield playing him straight up. Outfield playing slightly to push. Holding the bat high in the air. The pitch grounded over into the Husky dugout. Foul ball, strike two. Behind an 89 mile an hour fastball. Speshock had been working him with sliders. Changed speeds there and did so effectively. Almost snuck one by him. Drew a late swing and all he could do was line it into his own dugout. Now the 2-2 pitch from the freshman. Breaking ball hit high and hard but foul. Had it had the had home run distance. But nowhere even close to that left field foul pole. Way ahead of a breaking ball there. Difference of 12 mile an hour between the fastball and the off speed offering. As they will now dig back in the box for the 2 2 count. Speshock steps and delivers. It's ground over to third base through the hole. And that'll be a leadoff single. First of the day for number 13, Ivar Kett. And he'll bring up the left handed first baseman, Jeter Ibarra. Ibarra. Taking his cuts from the left side. One for two with a walk and a two-run double. And that also important third inning. Arquette with a small lead at first. Now increasing it a little bit. Special delivering home the pitch just below the knees with a fastball. Overshift on for the Cardinal. Haskins right by the second base bag trying to turn two on any ground ball hard hit. Speshock comes out at the belt. Steps and delivers in the dirt. Stanford women's basketball team. Their game just finished up over in Las Vegas. They dropped the Pac-12 championship to USC. They look forward to selection Sunday. I would imagine they're still going to be a one seed despite dropping the conference. I imagine SE will probably now get a one seed as well. It's the 2-0. We swung on and missed. Strike one. But best of luck to them the rest of their season. I mean, SC has been a kryptonite to them. Tough loss earlier in the year, now dropping the Pac-12 championship. Jeter Ibarra, the batter. One on, no one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Runner goes. Pitches outside, going back to first base of the runner. The throw is not in time. Malcolm Moore started to throw to second base. Arquette put on the brakes. Malcolm Moore pump faked to second. And then by the time he had... Was able to make a throw to Jimmy Natty at first. Arquette was scrambling back safely. The pitch was a strike, so it's 2-2. Bottom of the eighth inning, Cardinal trail by five. The 2-2 delivery from Tajita Ibarra. Swing and a miss. Special gets a strikeout. His first of the day. After striking out the first baseman, will be the left fielder now up, A.J. Guerrero. The junior is a local from Washington, as are many of the players here. Bit of a downtime for a program that's had success in the past couple decades. Talking about Washington. As a check on the runner at first, Arquette back safely diving. Ominous looking clouds in the back in the back skyline by the Cascade Mountains towering over the Bellevue skyline. 
as the first pitch. Fastball doesn't miss by much. Probably outside, maybe up. Guerrero one for four, and as so many of the batters had the inning of uh, in the third inning was a lone hit. I'm trying to say that so many of the batters that have hits have those hits in the third inning. The one out delivery from Speshok. The runner goes, will be hit high in the air, foul out of play. Hit and run may be on there for the Huskies. Hit and run was not on the last time. Actually, I can't imagine it was. That's the last time Ibarra took a strike. So it would have been a very poor job of a hit and run if you take a strike looking. But to be fair, Arquette was dead to right at second base had he continued. Seal attempt, the 1-1 one, one delivery now. Outside, tight breaking ball. Call it more of a cutter than a slider. A sweeper, maybe. Guerrero swinging the bat well above his right shoulder. 2-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Chase ball three. Fastball there. Never really looked like a strike. Practice cuts for Guerrero, now digs back in the box. Arquette the lone runner on at first base. One out here in the bottom of the eighth. The pitch, swing and chopped foul, maybe off his foot, over towards the Stanford dugout. Game time just over three hours, five minutes. Despite a rain delay. It's a fairly short rain delay. It was, uh, I'm not even... It's a strange rain delay in that they've been playing through rain the entire game and then suddenly decided to call it. Now the 2 2 is the count. And the delivery hit foul. This one on the line. Ahead of an off speed offering there. Got a good metal to it. Couldn't keep it fair. Beshock back on the mound for the 2-2 offering. His third 2-2 to A.J. Guerrero. Cardinal infield straight up. Like kick steps, delivers in the dirt. Malcolm Moore does very well to keep that one from going to the backstop. Maybe a, I mean it was a 52 foot slider or 52 foot change up. I'll guess a slider. I mean, Malcolm Moore was basically standing up and still jumping got it in his chest now the full count offering Arquette on the move and it's in the dirt so a walk to AJ Guerrero now there's two on one out here in the home eighth Michael Brown looking to add to the Huskies 7-2 to lead over the Cardinal Stanford took both game one and game two of this three game set, though by combined three runs. Of course, the Huskies now have a positive run differential in this game. Washington's been no stranger to close games this year. They're two, five, and one in games two runs or less. That's been part of their problem. The first pitch of Michael Brown, just low, ball one. Fastball there from Speshok. Michael Brown getting the start again at designated hitter after last night off. The lefty, Christian Lim was a lefty starter yesterday. The 1 0 pitch is hit high and hard out to center field. It'll get down in the power alley in left center. Racing after it, Ethan Hoddle will roll all the way to the wall. One runner comes around to score, a second runner coming around third base, and he'll score standing without a play. After being robbed of a home run his last time up, Michael Brown gets his redemption. A two-run double increases the lead to 9-2. to two. And Brown will be lifted from the game. The designated hitter not going to come up again, so might as well use a pinch hitter. Try to figure out who it is. I believe that's Kyle Fossum. 
over at second base now with one out. It's Luke Rolliter up to take his cuts. The lefty come in, came in to play center field. The right fielder was lifted out, Carson Olin. And now the diminutive center fielder digs in the left-hander batter's box. The first pitch from Speciok. Inside, ball one. Rolliter moving out of the way of a fastball. Rolliter in the his heel to the tape and swings and misses over the top of a slider. Rolliter's another Washington native. So many Washington natives on this team. Transfer from Everett Community College. He's played mostly as a defensive replacement in his time at UW. In the pitch, low with a, another breaking ball offering. It'll be ball two. So 2-1 two, count. One runner on at second base. It's Kyle Fossum. 9-2 is the score. Washington leads here in the home eighth. In the pitch from Sveshok. Low again. It's on fastball. Has lost command as of late. Someone going out to the Cardinal bullpen. I'm sure they would love if Sveshok could in this inning. In this game, in the series as well. Next time they're in action is next weekend at home at Sunken Diamond against USC. They're avenged the women's basketball team. 3-1 pitch. Swung and hit in the air and shallow left field. Moving over to Court McDonald, but he'll watch it drop in front of him. Fossum had a bad read. It will only get to third on the play. So a single, but not an RBI for the center fielder, Luke Rolliter. And watching McDonald out. Uh, he knew he was never going to get to that ball, but the runner Fossum at second was holding up in case he was going to get deked by McDonald. So runners on the corners, only one out here. Is there is someone getting loose in the bullpen for the Cardinal? I believe that's Nathan Fleishley. I think it's more of a precaution if Speshak loses it. Cow. Sorry, Carson Witten is the batter. Cooper Witten. Too many C names on this Washington team. First pitch, Witten is in the dirt. Or in the brown turf, I should say. Witten is two for three with a walk and two singles and a strikeout. Today's action. The 1 0. Again, misses. Yanked it with the fastball. Speciak has completely lost command as Malcolm Moore comes out to talk to him. Would not be surprised if Eager joins too. No movement in the bullpen, or no movement in the dugout yet, I should say. Flashly still getting used, still getting loose in the bullpen. Malcolm Moore goes back to his spot behind the dish. For this 2-0 pitch. Runners on the corners, one out. Washington leads Stanford by a score of 9-2 in the bottom of the eighth. Stanford needs a rally, a big rally in the ninth to keep their sweep dreams alive. Cardinal are 8-6 at the moment. 2-0 in Pac-12 play. Now the 2-0 pitch in the zone with a fastball. Strike one. After resetting... That mound visit, Ryan Speshok had better feel of that pitch. Went and swing in the bat. Now ready for this 2-1 offering. Speshok steps and delivers. Swing and a miss. Chase ball three. Big chance for a strikeout here. Went and taking a sweet time before getting back in the batter's box. Right and right matchup. White battered glove with otherwise purple accessories. And the pitch at the knees, just below the knees. Not missing by much, but it'll run the count full. R Luke Rolliter, the runner at first. Kyle Fossum at third. One out here. Crowd has most certainly thinned out as we've gone along 
Now into the eighth inning. Cardinal need a rally. After recording two more outs, check on the runner at first. Ralder back diving. Speed on the base paths for the Huskies. We'll see if Ralder's in motion. This full count pitch. Special at the belt. Runner in motion. It's a ball. Ralder dives in the second base anyway. Not it matters as the free pass is offered. So Speshok walks the bases loaded. And I'll now bring up the eight hole hitter, Blake Wilson. Wilson doubled and came around to score. Back in that seven spot, seven, seven spots, third inning, I should say. Forced at every base. The third baseman is up to bat. Meshach needs to throw strikes. Issued two free passes this inning. The first offering, nowhere near. I'd imagine Speshok is down to his last base runner before Fleishley will enter the game. Speshok comes set, steps and delivers, swing and a miss. Well executed fastball there. Also lost a few ticks of velocity, down to 86 on the last pitch. Steps and delivers, swing a foul tip right back. It's now ahead of Blake Wilson. One, two's the count. Carnal trail by seven in this eighth inning. Sunday getaway game from Seattle. Wilson taps the plate with his bat. Holding the bat more or less vertical by his right shoulder. Speshock steps off. Pitch count, pitch count starting to get a little bit high for the reliever, up to 40. I'm sure they eventually want him to use him as a starter. But not right now, he's a reliever. In this game, as he steps and delivers, pitch right up the middle, go to Owen Cobb, who feels it well, flip to seconds in time, throw to first, also in time. 4-6-3 double play off a spectacular glove play by Owen Cobb in the inning. Two come across, but it could have been worse. Cardinal need a rally with seven to tie this ball game up, eight to take the lead. We'll be back for ninth inning action from Seattle, Washington on KZSU2, Stanford Student Radio Network. Back now for the ninth inning. Cardinal needs seven runs here to tie the game up. A new pitcher on the mound to do it again. So it'll be Colton McIntosh, six foot one right hander from Phoenix, Arizona, coming to the game. McIntosh actually has not recorded any appearances the past two years. 